I was discussing an alternative myth to the ceramic and fully automatic models of the universe. I'll call the dramatic myth. The idea that life as we experience it is a big act and that behind this big act is the player. And uh, the player, or the self as it's called in Hindu philosophy, the Atman, is you. Only you are playing hide and seek, since that is the essential game that's going on. It's the game of games, it's the basis of all games, hide and seek. And so since you're playing hide and seek, you are deliberately, although you can't admit this, or won't admit it, you are deliberately forgetting who you really are, or what you really are, and the knowledge that your essential self is the foundation of the universe, the ground of being, as Tillich calls it, is something you have as what the Germans call a Hintergedanke. A Hintergedanke is a thought way, way, way in the back of your mind, way back here somewhere. Something that you know deep down, but uh, can't admit. So, in a way then, in, in order to bring this to the front, in order to know that that is the case, you have to be kitted out of your game. You see, the problem is this. We identify in our experience a differentiation between what we do and what happens to us. We have a certain number of actions that we define as voluntary. and We feel in control of those. And then over against that, there is uh, all those things that are involuntary. But the dividing line between these two is very arbitrary. Because, for example, when you uh, move your hand, you feel that you decide whether to open it or to close it. But then ask yourself, how do you decide? When you decide to open your hand, do you first decide to decide? You don't, do you? You just decide, and how do you do that? And if you don't know how you do it, is it voluntary or involuntary? Let's consider breathing. You can feel that you breathe deliberately. You can control your breath. But when you don't think about it, it goes on. Is it voluntary or involuntary? And so we come to have a very arbitrary definition of self. That much of my activity which I feel I do. And that then doesn't include breathing most of the time. It doesn't include the heartbeats. It doesn't include uh, the activity of the glands. It doesn't include digestion. It doesn't include how you shape your bones, circulate your blood. Do you or do you not do these things? Now, if you get with yourself <clears throat> and you find out that you are all of yourself, a very strange thing happens. You find that your body knows that you are one with the universe. In other words, that the so-called involuntary circulation of your blood is one continuous process with the stars shining. If you find out that it's you who circulates your blood, you will at the same moment find out that you are shining the sun. Because your physical organism is one continuous process with everything else that's going on. Just as the waves are continuous with the ocean, your body is continuous with the total energy system of the cosmos. And it's all you. Only you're playing the game that you're only this bit of it. But as I tried to explain, there are in physical reality no such things as separate events. So then, Remember also when I tried to work towards a definition of omnipotence. Omnipotence is not 
knowing how everything is done, it's just doing it. You don't have to translate it into language. Look, supposing when you got up in the morning, you had to switch your brain on. And you had to think and do as a deliberate process, waking up all the circuits that you need for active life during the day. Why, you'd never get done. Because you have to do all those things at once. How can a centipede control a hundred legs at once? Because it doesn't think about it. And so in the same way, you are unconsciously performing all the various activities of your organism. Only unconsciously isn't a good word because it sounds sort of dead. Superconsciously would be better. Give it a plus rather than a minus. Because what a consciousness is, is simply a sort of specialized form of awareness. When you uh, look around the room, you are conscious of as much as you can notice. And you see an enormous number of things which you don't notice. If, for example, I look at a girl here and uh, somebody asks me later, what was she wearing? I may not know, although I've seen, because I didn't attend. But I was aware, you see. So then, let me connect this with the problem of birth and death, which puzzles people enormously, of course. Because in order to understand what, what the self is, you have to remember that it doesn't need to remember anything. Just like you don't need to know how you work your thyroid gland. So then, when you die, you're not going to have to put up with everlasting non-existence because that's not an experience. A lot of people are afraid that when they die, they're going to be locked up in a dark room forever. And, it, and sort of undergo that. But one of the most interesting things in the world, this is a yoga, this is a way of realization. Try and imagine what it will be like to go to sleep and never wake up. Think about that. Children think about it. It's one of the great wonders of life. What will it be like to go to sleep and never wake up? And if you think long enough about that, something will happen to you. You will find out, among other things, that uh, it will pose the next question to you. What was it like to wake up after having never gone to sleep? That was when you were born. You see, you, you can't have an experience of nothing. Nature abhors a vacuum. So after you're dead, the only thing that can happen is the same experience or the same sort of experience as when you were born. In other words, we all know very well that after people die, other people are born. And they're all you. Only you can only experience it one at a time. Everybody is I. You all know you are you. And wheresoever beings exist throughout all galaxies, it doesn't make any difference. You are all of them. And when they come into being, that's you coming into being. You know that very well. Only you don't have to remember the past in the same way you don't have to think about how you work your thyroid gland or whatever else it is in your organism. You don't have to know how to shine the sun. You just do it like you breathe. Isn't it, doesn't it really astonish you that you are this fantastically complex thing? And that you're doing all of this and you never had any education in how to do it? You never learned, but you're this miracle? Well, the point is that from a strictly physical, scientific standpoint, this organism is a continuous energy with everything else that's going on. And if I am my foot, I am the sun. Only we've got this little partial view, we've got the idea that no, I'm just something in this body. The ego. That's a joke. The ego is nothing other than 
the focus of conscious attention. It's like a radar on a ship. The radar on a ship is a troubleshooter. Is there anything in the way? And conscious attention is a designed function of the brain to scan the environment, like a radar does. And note for any troublemaking changes. But if you identify yourself with your troubleshooter, then naturally you define yourself as being in a perpetual state of anxiety. <coughs> and the moment we cease to identify with the ego and become aware that we are the whole organism, you realize the, as the first thing how harmonious it all is. Because your organism is a miracle of harmony. All this thing functioning together. Even those corpuscles and uh, creatures that are fighting each other in the bloodstream and eating each other up. If they weren't doing that, you wouldn't be healthy. So what is discord at one level of your being is harmony at a higher level. And you begin to realize that and you begin to be aware too that the discords of your life and the discords of people's life, which are a fight at one level, at a higher level of the universe, are healthy and harmonious. And you suddenly realize that everything that you are and do is at that level as magnificent and as free of any blemish as the patterns in waves. The markings in marble, the way a cat moves, and that this world is really okay. It can't be anything else because otherwise it couldn't exist. But the reality underneath physical existence, or which really is physical existence, because in my philosophy there's no difference between the physical and the spiritual. These are absolutely out of date categories. It's all process. It isn't stuff on the one hand and form on the other. It's just, it is pattern. Life is pattern. It is a dance of energy. So I will never invoke spooky knowledge. Uh, that is to say that I've had a private revelation or that I have sensory vibrations going on a plane which you don't have. Everything is standing right out in the open. And it's just a question of how you look at it. So you do discover when you realize this the most extraordinary thing to me that I never cease to be flabbergasted at whenever it happens to me.